In the south of France, where the river Rhone flows into the sea, is a lonely, almost desert region called the Camargue. There, from time immemorial, has lived a herd of wild horses, descendants of those who carried the ravishers of Roman Europe westward from the Mongolian plain, an ancient and royal race. They tell a story in that silent country about the noblest of these horses and a boy. The name of the horse was Cramblin, white mane, white crest, for his mane was as snowy white as the plume of a hero or a wave in the sea. He was the leader of this wild herd, a fiery and redoubtable stallion whom all the other horses obeyed. Cramblin mistrusted human beings, for it seemed to him that the very sight of them put his freedom in danger. And when he thought it was necessary, he knew how to stand up to them. So the ranchers decided to capture him. And on that day, the story of Cramblin in the world of men began. It was thus in flight that the boy first saw the wild stallion. The name of this boy was Falco. He was the grandson of an old fisherman. All that Cranblanc had ever known was liberty, so he didn't take kindly to this trap. Now the wild horse had two kinds of pursuer. The man wanted power over him. The boy loved him. Because he had escaped them, the men wanted more than ever to capture Cramplaw. But now that he had tasted captivity, Cramplaw was more firmly resolved than ever to stay free. Your hat, sir, the boy said. But the ranch owner was much too chagrined even to thank him. The dirty beast, he said. Anyone who wants him can have him, so far as I'm concerned. Even me, Falco asked. He could hardly believe his ears. Yes, even you, the old man said. But by the time you catch him, your fish will have grown wings. And they laughed at the child. When the men laughed at Falco, they hurt his feelings. But at the same time, he told himself, Now, if only I can take Cramblin, he will be mine. So he set out to try to take him. Once he had outrun his first astonishment, Cramblin seemed to realize that this was a different kind of capture. His captor was his captive, too. Each owned the other. With Cramblin away, the herd was easily taken by the men. Hearing their voices, Cramblin had to go to them. For much as he liked the boy, he was a truly wild horse and he needed even more to be with his own kind. The old man was very much pleased with himself. I know horses, he said. I told you he'd come back to his herd. Cramplin was not at all pleased, for during his absence, another horse had taken his place as leader. While Cramplin dethroned the usurper, Falco made everything secure for the time when he would take him again. But the wild horse came to find him in his pride of victory and to be comforted. For now his wildness had been touched by love. Now the men were furious with Cramblin, and they were absolutely determined to recapture him in order to prove to him once for all that man is always the master. I know how to get him out of there, the old man told his men. I know what frightens a horse more than anything else. Brave as he was, Cramblin was terrified. Yet he might rather have died there in the fire than yield himself up through his fear. But no human being dreads fire as a horse does, and love is stronger than fear. 
This human valor sealed their friendship, and now they began to enjoy life together as friends will. Now at last in their flight from mankind, the boy and the wild horse became as one creature. He's heading straight for the river, the man cried. The river will stop him. But now no terror could turn them back towards captivity or division. Now that the men began to realize what they had done, they shouted, come back right away. Don't be foolish. The current will sweep you out to sea. We'll give you the horse. He's yours to keep. We promise. Only come back. Come back. But the boy no longer listened to them, for they had lied to him before. And astride Cramplin, he vanished into the waves. They swam straight ahead, straight ahead, and the white stallion, who was endowed with a great force, carried his friend, who trusted him completely, towards a wonderful land where children and animals are always friends and forever free, and where no man ever breaks trust or seeks dominion over another. And the story is told that they came to that perfect country easily and soon, and were given such a welcome there as might become an ancient hero or a king's son. And to this day, as the white waves beat in, a child of the Camargue may whisper, there's Falco, there's Cramplin. They're coming back, coming home. But there are other waves on other shores, and they have found their home.